Good morning, Pastor Jerry Scott here. Coffee break reflection for this 18th of February, second day of Lent, and a snowy day here in northwest New Jersey. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> We're anticipating somewhere around six to nine inches according to the forecast, but uh, I'm safe and warm here in my home. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to chat with you for a few moments this morning. I want to take us to the book of Ezekiel for our our lesson this morning in the Word, in a coffee break that's titled, Revive Those Dry Bones. Over lunch yesterday, a much younger pastor and I had the opportunity to have a lengthy conversation. It was a delight. We talked about our calling, and we talked about the future of the church. I'm getting ready to take a seat on the sidelines as I retire toward the end of this year. He's coming into the prime years of his productivity, but both of us have questions about what Christianity is going to look like coming in, in in the coming years. What will the church be once this pandemic passes? Will people return to the congregation or will they privatize their faith? An even more important question, how does the message of, God, of Christ's gospel touch the hearts and the minds of this young generation, four out of ten identifying themselves as nuns, meaning they have no stated spiritual preference. It's much more personal to me. I ask myself, Jerry, what will your faith look like as you move into retirement years, away from leadership in the local church? Will you stay strong and vital in the Lord? Will your commitment remain the core of your life? It's, it's a real question. The truth is, we're all, you and me, young and old, we are all in constant need of an infusion of the life of the Holy Spirit, a revival that keeps our faith from turning into a relic that's focused on some memory of yesteryear. Some of us will see the word revival and it will bring to mind a week of church meetings conducted by a fiery evangelist who stirs up a surge of emotional enthusiasm. <laughs> I remember those days from my childhood. That could be a partial idea, but spiritual revival is more than that. For others, a revival is seen as the launch of some great moral crusade or the birth of a new church program or the construction of a house, a new house of worship. Eh, not really, though those things can bring some temporary excitement to a, a group of Christians. And as I've already mentioned, revival is not rolling back the calendar to recover some moment of spiritual ecstasy in the past. Ezekiel's famous vision, I alluded to it as we began, that weird one, and it is weird, that we find in chapter 37 of Ezekiel's prophecy, defines revival, for me anyway. That preacher looked out in a valley and he saw it full of old dry bones, and we read, the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley full of bones. He led me back and forth among those bones and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were dry. And he asked me, son of man, can these bones live again? And I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. At the Lord's command, Ezekiel preached the word of the Lord to those bones. Before his eyes, they rattled, they arranged themselves into skeletons, they took on flesh. The wind of the Spirit blew over them, restoring life. What a, what a strange vision. And God said, speak a message to these dry bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel said, so I spoke a message as he's commanded me and breath came into their bodies and they all came to life. And they stood on their feet, a great army. Such is the metaphor, the picture of Ezekiel's dry bones come to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Revival is a theme throughout the scripture. It is. In the 85th Psalm, there is this prayer. Won't you revive us again, Lord, so that your people can rejoice in you? Habakkuk cried, Lord, revive your work in the middle of our years. Isaiah says, this is what the high and lofty one says, he who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place, but I am with him who is contrite 
and lowly in spirit, I will revive the spirit of the lowly, revive the heart of the humble. Hosea, that prophet who was so broken over the waywardness of Israel. In fact, he, he lived it in a metaphor of his own life, his own, his own wife leaving him to, uh, for other men and God sending him out and said, reclaim your wife, love her again, love her back to life as a symbol of his peoples leaving him and going after other gods. And Hosea cries, Come, let us return to the Lord. We are torn to pieces, but he will heal us. Our hearts have been broken by him, but he will bandage our wounds. In a short time, he will revive us that we may live in his presence. Our friend, we can't manufacture a revival. Too many try to do that. You can't manufacture, you can't work up a revival in your own heart. You can't work one up in your church with more meetings or more hype or pumping up the emotions. Those revivals, in my mind, resemble a circus that comes to town, creates a little of excitement, and then moves on. Genuine revival starts in the heart. It is the work of the Spirit of God. It is deep, it is personal, and it is persistent. We can't make it happen, but we can prepare for revival. We can hunger for renewal. We can wait on the Lord. Yes, we can. First, we pray. And in our prayers, we say, Lord, this is my desire. Send your word. Breathe on my heart anew. Second, we humble ourselves, acknowledging who he is, that he is majesty and throne, that we are his, his children in need. And in that humility, we repent for those sins that he brings to mind. And third, we turn to him again and again. Here I am, Lord, all that I am and all that I'm not. And I pray that you would renew the desire in my heart for you and your holy things. Yes, friend, in 2021, this pastor is praying for revival, knowing full well that when the Holy Spirit comes, he is always a disruptor. He asks for change. Will I let him own my life? Will you let him own your life? Will I let him change my heart? Will you let him change your heart? That is the key to spiritual revival. Here's a word from the word, more from Ezekiel's strange vision. May it become the template of revival in our lives for 2021. Son of man, these bones are the house of Israel. Indeed, they say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore, preach and say to them, thus says the Lord of God of Israel, behold, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord, and I have opened up your graves, O my people, and brought you up from those graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. I will place you in your own land, and then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I have performed it, says the Lord God. What a promise. Ezekiel chapter 37. Would you join me in prayer before we close today? Father, I hunger for the renewal of the Spirit in my life, and I know that many of my friends also hunger for you. Lord, help us to understand the true heart of revival. Help us not just to hunger for some excitement, or even, Lord, for some moral renewal, but help us to hunger for the very person of you. Touch our hearts, Holy Spirit, I pray. Breathe on us like you breathed on those dry bones in Ezekiel's vision. Make us live again. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our love, our life. Amen. Thanks, friends, for giving me a few moments to be with you today. God bless you so much. Such a privilege. I'll hope to see you tomorrow morning, and until then, walk with Jesus.